Um, yeah, welcome. So, as uh, I was mentioning, I was kind of like starting to chat about this before, but I'll kind of back up a little bit. So, the main thing um, is to just kind of walk through the implementation, gives you, give you guys uh, a feel of how Hystrix works and how you implement it and use it, um, and show the dashboard, and also do a lot of demoing to kind of like uh, interpret the results and, and through the dashboard, kind of see it in action, and see how it, how it works and what it can do. Um, and with that, I made a couple of projects for them to, uh, uh, to show this. So is anyone not at all familiar with Hystrix in the least bit here? I'm just kind of curious. So, all right. So th this is kind of cheesy, stupid stuff, but it illustrates a lot about what it's about. So it is uh, a library from Netflix, and it's a back-end library. It's used in Java, um, but it's for fault tolerance and resilience in the application uh, of distributed systems. So our stuff, you know, these days everything's totally, you know, microservices. So with more and more services and more and more um, service calls on the back end. So thinking of our composite APIs and what we have going on. Um, this, as if any one of those services have any problems or slowdowns or issues, it can totally affect the whole call and the whole, in our case, the whole application. And we've seen that recently, most recently, which was with Embus. It hung up and it brought down the BDP, it affected searching and everything. So, <clears throat> a couple of key concepts with this Hystrix library. Again, Netflix created it, they open sourced it with some other tools around it. Um, but the one kind of a couple of or architectural patterns they implement with it is this kind of bulkhead approach. So like with the ship, you know, these bulkheads are in there, so if any certain section of the, the ship were to leak, you could technically close it down and prevent it from sinking the whole ship. So, like the Titanic. <coughs> but that, was, that had that all, all in place, but it like ripped open so many bulkheads that was, it didn't matter. So maybe Hystrix is in the same way, but in all honesty, <laughs> if you screw too many services, you're done anyways. But, but that, I think that's an important concept because that's what it tries to do is to, for each microservice, kind of put it in its own bulkhead to prevent problems with it from kind of cascading out and affecting the rest of the application or, or ship. And the other pattern it's using is this circuit breaker pattern. Um, and those are just pictures of a, you know, an electrical loop, an electrical circuit. But picture this just like your circuit breaker, the circuit panel in your home. This is the same sort of thing where picture each circuit as a um, Hystrix command, kind of wrapped command. But if any one of those, like in your home, if a certain outlet or app, you know, uh, appliance is drawing too much electricity and kind of frying the electrical system, that circuit shuts off stops the electricity flow to and prevents a fire. And again, that's what Hystrix really does is it's got a lot of monitoring in place and a lot of different, several different thresholds you can kind of uh, set and it watches those things and if there are any sort of problems it opens the circuit so it prevents calls from going back to a service and it prevents problems, you know, prevents cascading problems so you kind of fail fast. So, let's make sure I got everything on that. So, Here's, with the app we look at, um, we're going to have just a simple kind of, so it's a Java app, a Spring Boot app, a simple version of our bigger apps we have in our, our you know, our workplace here. Um, and again, for many of you, uh, I think of, um, and where we're going to use it, it's with the Garbistons API, which is the searching and detail information for the applications, you know, for the, the SRP and DDP. So, we're going to have a controller that uh, in Spring MVC kind of world takes in the request, so to the front end people, which, well, it's a couple here, um, whom we're honored to have you too. Um, <laughs> you know, so, similar to kind of the node end receiving the request, but then in this case, we have some more stuff in the in between, but this line kind of denotes then a call off to a back end service, another service kind of leaving, leaving the JV on your end. So, in our case here, we'll have a client, just a simple client calling the service. And then, what you know, how you kind of utilize Hystrix is it um, 
take it, you make a Hystrix command, it wraps your client call, your service, whatever you want to kind of protect realistically, and, um, and that's it. And it's, it, I, I noted it there as a has a, so you, it's a literal command pattern. So you make a command, you give it, it holds a reference to whatever your object, like in this case a client call to service, it holds that, and you call via the, the command itself. So it's kind of you know, straightforward in that sense. Um, so the one thing with it, there is some overhead, um, and that is each Hystrix command is, is a new object, it's its own thread. So, you know, clearly your thread, you've got a thread pool now, you've got thread allocation going on, plus uh, <clears throat> object creation, garbage collection. So that's kind of the one drawback, or maybe overhead you have to consider with it. But given Netflix and how they're using it, it seems to far outweigh, you know, the, the library the way it's implemented doesn't have issues with that or, you know, they've tuned it in such a way it's not a problem. Um, and then also, I won't go into it, but what we're going to walk through today, they have a, a synchronous and asynchronous version to it, so you can, you know, depending on, you can create two different kinds of demands, one of which is a blocking call, synchronous call. We're going to just use that today. It's a little more straightforward to see and deal with. Um, and then they also have a a, uh, an asynchronous, which is literally an observable, uh, you know, observer pattern, and that you get a future back to Java, future that, you know, just kind of like the, the front end stuff that promises. So that's how you do it. So, oh, and then this is just kind of a simple sequence diagram, but just to run through it through quickly, clearly you kind of see uh, just the call from the client to our circuit breaker. Notice here they're getting timeouts. Hystrix notices the problem at that point, opens the circuit, and then the whole point is it stops making this, this final call here. I think that's kind of the, the whole premise behind it. So, I will save that for a moment later. So, let me now kind of walk you through quickly the services we've got here to, to demo this. Now I should probably mirror the displays and see. Uh, where's mirroring, by the way? I do want to mirror it, don't I? To get. Actually, I'm going to do this. Yeah, you shouldn't mirror it. Um, 
So let's hit the first one here. We'll take a look at this and we'll hit it. So this is the, the simplest form of a, of a command. And this is, we're making this hello command. So um, this guy, show this. Um, let's see here. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, this one here. Let's go to this one actually first. So this is the simplest way to do it, like the most basic way. And actually, I meant to, to show you this also. Let me back up. This is all you have to do to bring in Hystrix into our app. There is a Hystrix starter, this this uh, dependency here. So that's all I have to pull in to bring in the Hystrix libraries to uh, have them to be able to use them. And then the other thing I need to do is in my application, I need to tell it to use Hystrix, and then I give it that in annotation. There's two forms of the annotation, but so simply pull in one library annotate it with that, it makes it Hystrix or the circuit aware, and then you're, you're able to utilize them. The app's able to uh, utilize some of these um, annotations and some other things. So, back to this. So I'm now back at the controller. Um, sorry, meant to be at the service. So, check out this annotation. This is all you really need to do for the basic kind of simplest most kind of command it's just simply annotated with hystrix command and then also you typically would always give it a fallback method and that is the thing to do the method to, to execute if it opens the circuit so anything happens it's that fallback method that then gets called um, and, and executes so obviously you know if you think about it, if it's a fallback method you want to give it some sort of basic stub of data or something that the app can use and move on as best as can. As best it can. <clears throat> so, let's hit this thing. Oops. So, that's just literally returning a name. Nothing too interesting with that. Here is the next one I will show. That was up there before. That one. So, Notice, kind of watch below here on the console, it's just printing what it's getting back from the service. And that'll be that'll be kind of interesting too when we see it's falling back, it kind of dumps out a log message to you that something's failing. So nothing too exciting with that right now. I'll just show that in point real quickly because that'll be the one we're going to be utilizing more. So that annotation one, I don't think you'd probably use as much. Typically, you'll do something like this, where you make a command, and um, like in this case, create the command, and we'll open that. So now I'm in that hello command. Oops, I meant to go to the So, This one we are creating, I, I kind of made it a little more realistic in that I introduced a data access object, right? And then within that, put a command. So it's a little more real now. So we have a controller, data access object that holds this command. Now we'll go into this command here. And this has then the, um, the rest client call, which is totally simplified, hard-coded kind of thing here, but with that. I've got highlighted. So that's probably more realistic in that you're, when you, you create a command, like you're going to create this object and you'll inject often, you know, whether it's services or other, you know, clients and stuff into it, and that's what you'd use. So that is the, the basic command. And notice here, this is kind of standard method naming, but this git fallback method, that's our fallback. And notice this print line here, cars data fallback, car data, or here it is, no car fallback. Again, we'll see that down below when we kind of flood the app and do some things to it to kind of show uh, show how it's how it's working. So that was our that was our controller there. So now let me double check. I want to make sure I do these in order too. 
Because the next thing I want to show is the slowdown of the app. Right. So this is just a journal. And what I'm going to use this for is running, like, if you look here, these are, let's pull one up, that Apache AB benchmarking kind of thing. It's basically just a, a scripting tool to put load on a, on a server and kind of, you know, performance or, you know, test it in that sense. So with that, I'm just going to explain these. So um, the, the N is the number of times you're going to hit it. The C is kind of the concurrency, you know, how, how many uh, concurrent requests you're making. So let's do this. So what we're going to do now, or what I want to show now, is how um, the slowdown on a server can cascade way beyond, you know, what it may first seem like. So we're going to hit the one endpoint that's got a five second sleep in it, and we'll, we'll kind of show, and actually let me do that, watch this. So if we go here, so notice it's loading. Trust me, I, I have timed it and watched it. That's like five seconds there. So that so assume you're a user, you're coming in, you make a call, your service is hanging up five seconds. Here's what you're dealing with, a five second wait. So now, interestingly, let me oops, here, <coughs> slow. So now what we're gonna do, notice here, I have like ten thousand requests, ten at a time hitting that slow link. Fire that up. <coughs> takes a moment to start. What do the then, response codes look like? What's that? What do the response codes look like? Of, of what? <coughs> like what's it open as the circuit? Yeah. That's the fallback. Yeah. So it's, it's all, it's well, how do you code your fallback to work? Right. So like see, like in this case, I'm just returning strings every time. So my fallback, once it opens, it hits that, it returns a string. I think typically you always have to have the same signature coming back. Um, because that's the premise, like whatever it is, it's, you're going to get back some sort of stub of thing that'll, that'll make it go on. But yeah. Otherwise you'll break the contract of the service itself, right? Yeah. So let's look at that. Like, So watch that. It's loading. And when I was testing this before, like, that's guaranteed more than five seconds. It's still loading, as you can see. <laughs> I was seeing it anywhere from 10, 11, 12 seconds to load. So, you know, a five second server sleep there, when you're slamming it, it compounds into even, you know, double the, the, the problem and then some. And you can kind of see it here how it's just slowly kind of uh, flipping through the request. So, so that proves our, uh, or I just kind of wanted to demonstrate how, or without Hystrix, kind of some of the problems crowded. <laughs> just um, so let me show this. So, so here's the Hystrix dashboard. So, so next, what I want to do. So we saw how when the when the service slows down, it can totally hang up the app. So that's like so. Picture some back end service like our MDIS service that day. For whatever reason, it's having its issues, slowing down. The mo as the day heated, you know, went on and we got into our peak hours, it just backed up the request more and more. The threads kind of hang up and, you know, next thing you know, it just grinds the whole page to a halt or at least like the API that feeds the page. So then we'll kind of take a look at hitting that same thing with that slow time with Hystrix and watch what happens. But this is pretty cool, their dashboard they have. Um, so this is an, I just took a screenshot of an actual Hystrix um, you know, one of their dashboards to show because it's kind of interesting because, so this is one command, each box is a command. This is a two minute rolling window here of requests. So you can see it's, there's a spiking up and down. Generally they sort of correlate to each other. Some are flatter than others, right? Um, that dot's pretty cool. And the larger the dot, the more activity of the service. And the color means something. So green is good. As it gets more red is bad. Red is bad. You'll see it go between yellow and orange along the way if it's sort of like not completely tipped over. So that's interesting. This is a, this here is a one minute window of stuff. So if you look, and is it that blurry when you step back? Okay, no, it's not as bad. So um, request per second by, by hosts on a cluster. 
because again, their stuff's all clustered. It's not one host, so it's many things going on. Um, and then this part of the day, looking at things. So I, it's really kind of interesting how they kind of have all these different slices of the data and what's going on. But these are successful requests. These are fallbacks. Um, those are, I think, right timeouts. So those are some of the error state things going on there. Um, and I think that's actually percent of requests in error. So we'll look at, oh, and then the other key thing. Check that out, circuit closed. So you'll see in ours when you know, we, we try and cause things to tip over, you'll see the circuit open up. We'll see fallbacks starting to increase. And um, you know, it gives you a good, good insight into what's happening with that. So let's do, I will start up the dashboard. So this too is a project that I pulled down uh, that, that runs it. Start that. environments you don't typically have just one machine. So one other big project they have, it aggregates data from many hosts into a single stream that feeds it for a certain command. So that's kind of a cool thing too. So we add it, and now we'll say monitor. And here's here are our dashboards. That's interesting, that one hasn't ever turned up before, but whatever. Here are the two we care about. Hello command, and then the car data command. Hello command is that simple one we had in the beginning, the, the first one we showed. So let me do this, now watch. So here's a little curl script that is just hitting each of those, the hello and the, the car data. And if you kind of look here, you'll see the hello. Notice, see the car is changing here? So it's just simply calling them. So now watch, you see this one should perk up here and, and, oh, not that one, this one. Notice they're both now picked up, they're getting calls. And notice for 10 seconds, they're getting like 18 calls in this 10 second rolling window. There's a total of 18 calls. So watch this. So I will just put a little load on it. So like this one, I will do the, uh, the your car command, just do concurrently, just to not cause it problems or have it tip over, but watch it will all of a sudden respond. Notice it starts going up in request oops, in requests for the uh, the 10 second rolling window. Notice the dot starts getting larger, you know, it started. So they're dead, it's a very rich, I, I find that really neat is there's so much information packed in this simple little dashboard. And it as we see when we try and cause it to tip over, it's pretty interesting how it actually um, it responds and works too. And then down here, also, um, this is as it's you know as it says it's monitoring the thread pools. So often you would have multiple thread pools with you know different commands in them because that too you want to separate commands. So see if one if my service hangs up and the command short circuits and there's have it's having problems, it's in a different thread and that that thread can kind of walk away and continue and it's not kind of hung up in the where with the same set of threads pooling. So you'd often set in a production environment, you kind of need to think a little bit about the thread pooling you're putting behind it. So, yeah, that is it. So if you look here, <laughs> well, notice that. So yeah. see how it's consistently that 19 calls for two seconds, and that's the 57. You know what? Let me double check, too. I'm going to. Let's see, so I just wanted to do these in order, that's why I'm taking a look down here to make it kind of, uh, you know, flow, not just jump around because I, I know I would uh, forget something if I didn't. So, right, so now let's do this. We will, so we showed the service slow down and kind of hang up. 
by hitting that five second slow service with load on it. What I'll do now is I will put some load on the, um, the Hystrix endpoint one. And you know what we'll do? And we'll make it fail. So watch, here's this is when we could see it get interesting too with this. So if we hit your car now, we won't hit slow, we'll hit the command one. So this is now not the straight service hit, this is going through our Hystrix command. So let's see. See, so notice the car is going up. <coughs> um, so now let's do this. We'll put some load on it. So it's that command one. We'll put like, like, here's what I found too. So jacking up the concurrency just on my machine, that's how I can kind of cause it some problems. So I found like two or three is no problem. You start getting five, definitely ten, all of a sudden then it's, it starts failing, you know, failing over and having issues. So let's even, like if I were to do, I'll do four. And we'll take a look at the monitor and see what it's doing. So it's going up. Watch the blue. That's see. So nothing's failing. And notice it moved over by. These are sorted by. I think um, you know most volume or kind of usage. So see. Notice it's not having problems. So I'm going to just stop that. Go a little higher. Like seven maybe. See. See. Notice that. See how it was like going red. Notice we should see. Yeah. Can I so far back? But notice how many there are, like, oh, see, it's switching the order, but notice very few are passing. It's really going to the fallback. Now watch this and see. Like, we should see it here. we clear it so we cannot. See, see the fallback, and very few cars are coming in. So, and the way this works, too, is these, these um, I left the default values in there. It's like every five seconds it'll try and check the circuit and, and it'll be, you know, uh, hit it again and try and try and get a value. But let's let's see now like what happens if we see like that I'm not not able to it's hitting my fallback. And notice with that here's the next thing I'm gonna do. Here's the next trick I'm gonna show you. So I'm going to shut down the service and I'm going to jack up find the command call to five seconds. So then what will be, what then this proves, and what's kind of interesting is, remember how the other one, when it was five seconds and it was getting slammed, you sat there like 14, 15 seconds to just get nothing back. Well, actually, in this case, it gave back the response, but it's, it's way long. What this will do then, <clears throat> what you'll see is it'll fail fast, and that's what we want ultimately is if the services are having issues and crap's going down and it's it's having problems, it quickly fails fast, gives some sort of fallback thing, and the user moves on, it doesn't hang them up. So it's that's beneficial for the user plus the whole system. It's not hanging up the system. So let's go to the service. I'll put I'll make that five seconds now instead of five hundred milliseconds. So now, we started. I notice sometimes it's when it's getting hit with load, the service is slow to come back up. But let's see what's here. But now, let me show this. We should be having lots of problems on the dashboard because, see, notice how those are going down, down, now it's straight all fallback. It's not getting any calls because now the service is literally shut down behind it. So it's, it's failing over to the callback. And if we hit it, it's fast. You know, it's, there's no hang up. So then, um, let's take a, take a look at this. Okay, so it should be back now. So let's check this watch. We'll go, here's the service call. Waiting for host. I just want to make sure it's up and serving. Car six, see, so we should get it. So this is that five second See, okay, so it is back. So now it's up and running, it's all happy. Notice this, because you know why that benchmark thing finished. So now it's just getting hit with those that curl script where it's just you know one at a time basically. So everything's good, it's all happy. Keep switching on me. Oh no, look, it must still be running. There it is, it's down. This is the this is the hello command that's just getting hit with the one and it's just 
not the help is not there. So now, if we hit this again, that's see, so that's significant right there, and that that just it's hanging up five seconds on the background. Plus, it's getting slammed with the uh, load kind of test on it, but it's failing. Out, you know, it's it's failing out within uh, you know half a million, you know half a second or so. Those you know that's kind of the, uh, the cool stuff we want to to be able to do with this, and will help us with our application things. So. Take a look here. Those were the main things I wanted to show. With the, let's see. So, and the failure we showed with um, the shutting down the service. Notice it was able to to handle that. It was falling, you know, failing over, or falling back, um, and running the other the, the fallback command. And then we started back up. It's pulling every five seconds. Once it's back up, it picked that up and, and kind of moved on. So. Um, and now if we look, let's see what it's doing now. Because notice that load script finished. It's just this simple ping on it now. It should be having no issues. See? Wait, what the it's showing zero. That's interesting. The circuit's open. It shouldn't be. Actually, yeah, I should have pointed that out before. Yeah. Um, let's refresh that. Because it shouldn't be open. How does it know to close the circuit? Well. Hystrix, that's one thing. Again, it has it has a polling mechanism in it, and it, you can schedule how frequently you want it to recheck, but it will recheck. It will take a subsequent command, and every five seconds in this case, by default, it will retry it. If it's good, um, again, there's more thresholds you can set on there. I'll show a few of those. Um, it'll close it, and then it moves on. So um, that is interesting. It keeps staying down, so let's see. Uh, because notice, let's hit this here just to make sure. Uh, and fallback. So, still too high for your threshold. Yeah, you know what? I'll I'll do that. I'll dial it back down. I will restart. You know what? That is right. Look, because our default threshold. Let's see. We have on this command was. Let's see, that was, we're using this one, sorry. It was 800. Was it 800? Yeah, we were at 5,000, so it was causing that. Sorry, thanks for noticing that. So, that is just about it. So let's just make sure that thing's back up. Oops. Let's go back to this and okay. see. There you go. So, yeah, thank you on that one. Mm -hmm. But, see, that's where it, it is smart in that sense that, again, the service was taking longer than the actual So um, the last, so those are the main things I kind of wanted to demonstrate with this. So, you know, and if anyone wants to tinker with this too, it's a Git project. You can pull these two services down, fire them up, no problem, and just kind of like tinker coding with the, uh, with the commands to kind of get a feel for how they work. Um, and then the last thing I was just going to show here briefly, here are just some of the um, kind of thresholds you can set in there. Because you can really kind of dial them in. Um, so time out in milliseconds, that's how fast, you know, how much time you're going to let it sit and wait. By default, these are the, the defaults in the uh, parens there. But, you know, so request volume threshold. So it's going to have to have a certain threshold before it's even going to consider opening a circuit. You know, so maybe if it's failing in low volumes, you just you let it fail and you don't do anything. Um, sleep window is what I mentioned of oops, about you know the retry, um, how long it's waiting, and then error threshold percentage. You can dial that up or down depending how many errors you wanted to to consider before opening a circuit. So that's um, I'll drop that in the tech channel, but that was the main thing. So hopefully, let me just say one last thing. The um, we, we did it on VDP around an MS call. It's getting performance tested now to make sure that there's nothing, you know, bad going on with the object creation, garbage collection, that stuff. But hopefully, you know, it will perform well, and then we can start using it. So I'd say, you know, consider using this on, on you know, in the back end things, especially if it's something that isn't like necessary for the page. So if it's just some who knows what. 
you know, what aspect of the page may be Premiere. Like something fails in Premiere, you could show, you could skip showing the inventory sections or show defaulted to the native ad instead or something like that. But hopefully we can start using this. So I understand this is useful for service calls like that. So for Envis, for example, on BDP, we hit Envis to get legacy IDs so we can build a link for the new car configurator. Um, what about like main service calls? So for example, on the BDP, the initial ISS hit, the initial CSS hit, those are really important calls. Um, would, would that be something we would want to surround Hystrix around? For the, the purpose of kind of rebooting those services if they get flooded? Yeah, I mean, again, like, it, this is where everyone start thinking about how to, how to, you know, utilize this. But you're right, it's not like you could give a fallback to some default car, because that is yeah. kind of worthless. But the one benefit could be that it short circuits it quickly. And um, with this dashboard, people might be aware of what's happening. And, um, you know, by short circuiting quickly, at least to the user, they'll get a fast response versus a page hanging, and hopefully with this, we can monitor it better and um, you know know if it's down. But those are good questions, you know, as far as what do we really do with these, some of these things? How do we fall back? You know, does that help a little bit? Or? Yeah, I mean, it it does make sense for the purpose of just just not having any control of ISS, not being able to shut it down and yeah. just rebooting it, so. They may play on what set the thresholds that are, so if it's something that's just vitally important to the page, if you have your thresholds high, it's at least get the monitoring out of it, right? So. Yeah. 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 We should be using this for all our fingerprint calls yeah. and all of that stuff. There, I, I think, if I recall correctly, there is one way of um, configuring the fallback so actually, when when it first has a successful hit, it will cache uh, the payload, and then the fallback will return the, that cache payload instead of returning an error message. Uh, yeah. So that would be great for our fingerprint stuff. Um, uh, a lot of I think a lot of our service calls need to be surrounded by this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's so. That's what I really was hoping out of this to see it. You know, with the project too really easy to pull in. It's we have a pattern to, to start coding them. We have but in the BDP to look at and hopefully people can start using it. <coughs> we haven't um with it no, we haven't yet so far. You know, the only one we did just this kind of blocking the hall. Is there a reason maybe it's more of a general question anymore is it is there a reason that they continue to give I would think should be the default versus like if yeah. you really want to do synchronous, you can do it versus you know. I, I wonder why they why well, they you know what? have even async, both. Async you know? came after the fact, like a year after they released the library. Oh. I read that somewhere along the way. I recall reading that. Okay. Um, and and they have kind of a, a half baked async in the in the way the the two implementations of the command. So it's kind of more that the async one came after the fact. They they. I'm assuming just keep the old one in case for whatever reason you want it, but you're right, it seems like. But, you know, it's a little trickier, it's a little, yeah, I'd say a little trickier with dealing with promises and all that versus just, you know, a blocking call. It's very straightforward versus dealing with an observable one. Not that it's, you know, insurmountable, obviously, but it's a little yeah. bit more to the end. So, uh, have you guys written any framework for like other applications to just start wrapping method calls or something in a Hystrix command rather than uh, bootstrapping all of the Hystrix stuff themselves, like you know, grading those thread no, groups and we, stuff like that? We haven't. Um, we, and again, we we actually did one implementation, a bunch of things on SRP, um, and then it sat. We got pulled into the performance stuff, and then we did when Envis broke, did this on VDP, and then we kind of changed things. Um, so maybe it's worth sitting with you guys, you guys in platform to help us kind of understand if we, we need to um, put a layer on. It almost felt like we didn't want to because it is more like, you know, you pull in the library and here's sort of the pattern we used to code mm -hmm. it. We didn't want to like impose another layer on it, but I don't yeah. know, it's worth probably sitting with you guys since you're thinking that way. 
more lately, so you might spot whether it's good to do or we can do it. Yes? With uh, implementation being like pretty straightforward, maybe decent as well. Um, Sorry, because just trying to shoot like this. Because it really do want to use it. If by default, use it. If you're not, then you just remove it and pull it out. Yeah, I think, like just to encourage further use or at least, you know, yeah, we definitely would like to put fault tolerance. So that's one of the uh, things on the roadmap to create uh, that inside clutch. And that's why I was, no, my question was like, did you guys create a new framework so that we can just utilize that framework uh, when you scaffold Java apps? Yeah, we'll talk with you about that. It's Something like an annotation, like, you know, hey, I want this method called wrapped in a hysterics command. I should oh, just be able that, to annotate that, that, which is already that, there annotation, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 But that, that's where it feels like I don't know. Like I, I'd almost rather not introduce another layer on it. Right. Like, uh, yeah. I just use. So in other words, there is some onus then on the developer to just maybe do a little reading or understand the basics of how to use it, um, versus trying to impose like right. you know something. We just got that. What's that? Yeah, it was us. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you see like a, lots of repeating patterns, like when you try to use Hystrix when setting up some defaults or like some uh, some calls which like behave in a similar way, similar fashion, fallbacks, and all the settings, then we can think of creating something which is a, a framework. You know, yeah. Otherwise, if the application is using something which is very specific to that application, then it doesn't need to use that. Mm -hmm. well, could you could you do something in Clutch? I don't know if you do now. Could you do where you kind of scaffold out? The classes that say this is sort of a fault tolerant way of doing this, and it's sitting there as a scaffold to show. Oh, yeah. We can do that. Do yeah, we can do yeah. that. We have some example classes right now to, to tell people, like, this is how we can do services using Spring, this is how we can do services using, like, uh, Apache, whatever the thing is. Yeah, so you could add, like, two more yeah. on top of that. that yeah. Sort of the wrapped version. Right, of yeah. Yeah, and then getting this dashboard, um, you know, available in that app deployed so we can 